Hello, this is Ron Clymer, and this is part of the Black Shirt series, and I'm with First Real Estate School in Hendersonville. I want you to write down what you see on that board right there because I'm going to take that board away. But it says, if you are considering to buy an apartment building with 30 units, the units rent for $1,000 per month per unit. Vacancy and collection is 7% of gross income. Annual expenses are $160,000. Debt service is $2,500 per month. The appropriate cap rate in the area is 10%. What is the value? Now, this is determining the value with income capitalization. So, uh, let me just take a look at this. Now, the first thing I want you to know, you're considering buying this building, so we're determining the value. Now, those of you that came to my school, and that's really who this is for, you remember me telling you about Uncle Ned that died in Miami. By the way, I have that on another video here on YouTube. So. I would suggest you go look at it. It's the exact same thing as this. It's just a different example. But you're considering buying this 30-unit building. And we wanted to determine what it's worth. Now, uh, we want to determine what it's worth. So we have to do a pro forma statement. So the first thing we have to do is take our calculator and ascertain how much income this property will generate if it's 100% full a hundred percent of the time all right let's see let's take our calculator it's 30 units times a thousand dollars per month by the way it doesn't say per month there on my sheet but it should so it's a thousand dollars times 30 or thirty thousand dollars per month now pro forma statements are always done annually so we're going to take that by 12, so that is $360,000. By the way, Kathy's taking this away, so I hope you've got it written down. Kathy, you got the camera on the board? All right. So that is $360,000 that potentially could come into this property if it was 100% full 100% of the time. Well, we know it's not going to be 100% full 100% of the time. People move out, people die, people don't pay their rent. There's all kinds of things that happens that causes a property not to be full. Well, it tells us in the question that 7% vacancy is about average. So we're going to take the 360,000 times 0 0.07 so we can expect $25,200 to never come in the front door. We're never going to see that money. It's just a dream that we're going to see it. So we're not going to see that money. So we're going to subtract that from the 360000 potential gross. All right. I'm going to erase the word income here, but y'all don't erase it on your sheet. So we're going to take the 360000 potential gross income, we're going to subtract $25,200, and that's going to give us $334,800. Maybe I should get a recording studio instead of doing this in the front yard. We got a bird over there that is with us. So we got $34,800 that's probably going to come in the front door. But we got expenses. Now it tells us in the question, and that's the only way we can know it, that we got expenses of $160,000. That's the management fee to the realtor, that's the taxes, that's the insurance, that's keeping the place looking decent. It's uh, anything that we got to do to run this place is included in that money. Now, did you write down that there's $2,500 a month in mortgage payments or debt service? Debt service is not an expense. We don't give a hoot how much the debt service is. I just put that in there to entertain you. 
So debt service is not an expense. It has no correlation to the value because we presume Mr. Buyer, Mr. Seller, Mr. Appraiser presumes that they bought the property for cash. Now, obviously, that's probably not true, but it's a presumption and appraisal. So our net operating, and I'm going to erase that word income again, is $334,800 minus $160,000 in expenses, and that's going to give us $174,800. And that is the net income that this property generates. That's the net income that this property generates. Which, by the way, don't forget in the question, you're the one considering buying this property. Isn't that the number that you would care the most about? How much is it going to net me? I don't give a hoot about this, 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 or this. They're just a means to get to the net income. Everybody remember this. I over RV. I over RV. Now, this is not a formula. It's a memory peg for the formula. Now, the last sentence in the question said, what is the value? What is the value? So, we're looking for the value. Well... What are we going to do? We're going to cover up the value, and there's the formula for value. Value equals I over R. The I is the net income. Now, you've got to have that memorized. It's not the gross income. It's the net income. Those gross incomes are just conversation. So the net income is $174,800. That's the net income. Now, the capitalization rate given in the question, and by the way, where does that number come from? Well, people that sell 30-unit apartment buildings, they just know what the appropriate capitalization rate is for their city. If you were a CCIM down in Miami, and you called, and somebody called you and said, what's the appropriate capitalization rate for, for Miami, that expert would know. For our purposes, it's always given in the test question. So in this case, it's 10%. So $174,800 divided by 10%. Divided by 0.10. And my calculator says 1748000, which is 1 million. $748,000 that you would be willing to pay for this property. And if you paid $174,800 for it, whether you bought it for cash or got a mortgage, your return on your $174,800 would be 10%. So if you got your money in the bank at 2% or 3% or you got some stocks, might be paying you 4%, but you really lost money over the last six months, this should be looking pretty good to you. And so, it's I over RV. You cover up what you're looking for. There's the formula. The other thing, you got to make sure that this number is the net income. We take the potential gross income. We subtract the vacancy and collection. Gives us the effective gross income. We subtract the expenses. Gives us the net operating income. NOI, net operating income. So that's the way you do that. I'm going to have my able camera person over here aim the camera on the next question. And we're going to move on to the next question. A man bought a house for $125,000, and he sold it for a net price to him of $175,000. 
And the question is, what is his percent of profit? What is his percent of profit? Now, by the way, I've got this on YouTube already at least twice, but this is the black shirt series. So the formula is what you made over what you paid. What you made over what you paid. This is real simple. Do not try to complicate this. What you made over what you paid. Now, if you've seen my other video, I told you I learned this in the fifth grade in elementary school, Miss White's class. And Miss White, she didn't explain to us that it's your profit over your cost. Because I'm sure Miss White was smart enough to know that us little fifth graders there in elementary school in South Georgia didn't know what profit or cost was. But we could certainly understand what you made over what you paid. And so what you made over what you paid or divided by what you paid. Well, we bought it for 125. We sold it for 175. So what did we make? Fifty thousand dollars. Is that right? So we made fifty thousand dollars profit that goes up here and we paid a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars what you made over what you paid let's keep it simple and hold on what did I do with my calculator got it right here all right what you made was fifty thousand dollars what you paid was $125,000 and my calculator says 0.4 or 40%. Does everybody know that 0.4 we move the decimal over two places and so 0.4 is 40%. So that's a 40% profit on that little deal there whether it was over one year or whatever. So this is Ron Clymer at First Real Estate School in Hendersonville. And I hope these are helping you. This is the Black Shirt series. And so, like I say, I've got this on YouTube, uh, other videos. I should have wrote down those names, but I didn't. But you'll see some other videos to help you with some other stuff. Thank you for watching.